Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Deus Ex Human Revolution. Well, six months have passed since the attack on Seraph Industries in which our protagonist, Adam Jensen, narrowly escaped death through the use of augmentations. His recovery has been sadly cut short, however, as David Seraph calls him back to deal with the situation in Milwaukee. Jensen quickly sees Pritchard to properly configure his retinal enhancement before heading to the helipad to get moving. On the way to the plant, Saraf briefs Jensen on the situation and explains that the hostile break-in involves a group of pro-human purists that have broken in and taken hostages, clearly looking for the typhoon weapon that was recently moved there. Therefore, our objectives are to locate and secure the typhoon, rescue the hostages and deal with the leader of the purists, a man named Zeke Sanders. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it! The first thing that we're gonna do is enter this building and have a quick chat with the SWAT officer inside. Tell me you're the guy we've been twiddling our thumbs waiting for. Well, aren't you the impatient one? SI security, name's Jensen. Jensen, yeah, I thought I recognized you. Used to be on team two till that Mexican town thing went down. I gotta say you're the last person I pictured taking orders from a CEO. Things change. Not always for the better. Feel like getting in there and doing whatever it is your boss wants you to do? Because maybe then we can do our job. You know what? I don't like your attitude. <laughs> Jerk! I got it from here. Sit tight. Wait for Seraph's signal. Like we got a choice. Don't make me smack you again. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll make our way outside onto the roof through this door. We'll then head down both of these ladders until we reach the alleyway below. Now we'll need to be nice and quiet heading up to this corner because there is an armed guard standing just around it. Needless to say, sneaking past this guard is certainly an option, but we've just been fucking augmented. So let's test out our new hardware. What? No, I don't think it's stupid to stand with my back towards the only point of entry. What kind of stupid question is the- <laughs> 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 Sweet! And now we'll continue down this alleyway and crouch down behind these crates. As you can see, there are one, two, three guards between us and our way in. We're gonna have to do something about that. Hey guys, I think I heard someone get brutally murdered down that alleyway. Wanna go and check it out? And put myself in danger? No way! I think I'll just stand here with my back towards it. That seems like the more sensible- Oh my god, Billy! Subtlety at its finest, folks. I believe that the gunfire came from this direction. Ding ding, we have a fucking winner! <gasps> no, ladies and gentlemen, we aren't going to shoot the place up, but rather take a much stealthier approach. In fact, we can actually slip inside the plant completely unnoticed without engaging any of the guards. How, you ask? Well, let me show you. From these boxes, we'll make our way back into the alleyway and through this door. In here, we'll jump over these boxes and move through this crawl space. After moving through this tunnel, we'll re-emerge outside and crouch down by these crates. Now we'll sneak our way around the perimeter using the crates and park trucks as cover. At this point here, we'll wait for this guard to turn around and head back down the stairs, and then we'll move around the next truck. Crouching by this crate, we'll wait here for the patrolling guard to return to the top of the stairs and move away again. When he does this, we'll sneak up the stairs and head through the door. And voila! Here we are, inside the facility, and the guards outside are none the wiser. And look! We've achieved the Ghost Reward. This is awarded when you complete an objective without alerting a single enemy to your presence. Needless to say, we're going to be gunning for this every time. However, killing and knocking out guards is still completely acceptable, and as long as you're discreet about it, you'll still get the ghost reward. So, in that case... Hey Simon, what's the health insurance like on a gig like this? I don't know, why do you ask? Well, oh well it's just that I've got a really funny feeling that someone's gonna sneak up behind me and break my- Oh, oh god no, this can't be happening! Hey! Ow! Hey, you're not meant to be- <laughs> 
Call me Casper, the sadistically violent and often homicidal ghost. Now before we head deeper into the enemy infested plant, I'd like to quickly acknowledge an alternative method of infiltration that is likely going to be much easier than sneaking around the guards outside. So let's jump back to the alleyway where the mission began. From the alleyway that we began from, we'll take this crate off of the forklift and place it in front of the shipping container. We'll then jump up onto the container, move along it and climb the ladder up onto the roof of the plant. Now here we see an electrified puddle. Guess what happens when we step in it? Ow, ow, ow. <coughs> so rather than commit suicide, we'll move the crate on the right to reveal a small crawl space. We'll head through it to the other side and once there, we'll flip the switch on the breaker box shutting off the electricity. We will then head through the fence, continue along the roof and enter the rooftop vent. And look at that, we're in. And we've received the ghost reward. I'm in. Nicely done, Jensen. May I ask how? A vent on the roof. It'll be in my report next time we discuss security loopholes. Oh, goody. We'll now drop out of the vent, safely descend to the floor and use cover to conceal ourselves from sight as we begin to move through the warehouse. Now, remember what I said earlier about discreetly engaging enemies? Well, that's all well and good, but it's absolutely imperative that you conceal the body from your enemies to avoid detection and maintain your ghostly playstyle. Needless to say, if a body is found, you're in trouble. Hey, who are we- oh! Your worst fucking nightmare. Notice how I didn't hide the body? Look what happens next. Oh my god, man, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I think I'll be Fuck! So although it is possible to stealthily subdue every guard in the warehouse, it is far simpler to simply sneak by them and proceed undetected. So rather than KO this patrolling guard, we'll use cover to jump across this opening, make our way underneath this shelf, cross the aisle, and use the boxes at the rear of the factory to discreetly move toward the other side. When this guard turns around and walks away, we're clear to break out of cover and make our way down the ramp and through the door. In this next room, we have two enemies present, one of whom is trying to get the inactive sentry gun to work, whilst the other is being a tough guy and talking smack to the police outside. Now, although it's quick and easy to simply sneak by these wankers unnoticed, I'd rather not. God damn this stupid turret! Why the fuck won't you work? Oh wait, what's, what's this button say? Uh, mm. On? Maybe if I push that, it'll- huh? <laughs> and now all we need to do is take care of the guy at the window, but first, our arms need to recharge. And I know what you're thinking, rechargeable arms? That sounds stupid. Well, that's because it is. Adam Jensen, a scientifically enhanced super being saved from the very brink of death through the use of augmentation technology. Now part man, part machine, Jensen can brutally dispose of any enemy in his path. Terminators? This is Adam fucking Jensen. Decent battery is not included. Anyway, Jensen's arms have now finally finished recharging, so now we can take out this last enemy. There ain't no way you pigs are getting in here. We got hostages and we're untouchable. Baraka wins. Now with those two guys dead, we'll make our way up these stairs and open this door. We now can see three guards having a conversation in the corridor. When they disperse and the remaining guard begins patrolling, we'll discreetly tail him and take him out. Punch! Me! Bro! <clears throat> we'll then drag his unconscious body around this corner and focus our attention on the guard in this locker room. Now, we don't want him to come across his unconscious buddy, so we'll ensure that that doesn't happen. Excuse me. Yes? Sleep. Now we'll drag his body away from the open door, go to the corridor, grab the other guy we KO'd, and drag him into the room as well. And now we're all clear to proceed. So we'll head down the remainder of this corridor and prepare to make our way through the door. However, before we do, it's worth mentioning that we can actually get to this stage without having to engage any guards at all. How? Well... Back in the warehouse, rather than heading down the ramp and through the door, we'll use these boxes to jump over this rail and stealthily make our way across the side of the warehouse and climb up this ladder. When we reach the top, we'll grab the crate that's directly in front of us and place it in front of the vent on the wall. Now we'll of course use the crate to enter the vent and make our way through it, bypassing all of the guards that we previously had to deal with. Then we'll drop down into the same corridor as before and make our way to the door. Now wasn't that much easier? Anywho, now we'll use our elite hacking skills to overcome this challenge Really? That's the security Seraph has? A fucking toddler could hack this shit! 
Access granted. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, once we're through this door, we'll move into this chamber, wait for the game to load, and proceed into the next room. Now, the hostages that we have to save are being held in the office above this room, but of course, getting to them is easier said than done as we have a number of armed hostiles occupying the area. So what are we waiting for? Let's rescue those hostages! We'll start by discreetly eliminating these guards. Hey guys, my mum made me this Deadpool mask. Does it make me look No, 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 Oh, that's right. Where's a fucking candy bar when you want it? Oh, waiting. Waiting. Okay. Sweet dreams, cockhead. And now we're free to head to the hostages, but before we do, let's have a quick gander in this room. Stupid Zeke, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be looking for. Oh, hey, look at that. A concussion grenade. I'll be taking that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll head back out of this room, cross the lab, and head up the stairs. Now, as soon as we enter the room with the hostages, the bomb's timer will automatically activate and we'll have 30 seconds to disarm it before... <coughs> yeah. So to make life easier, grab the pocket secretary off of the unconscious guard in the center of the lab downstairs, and it'll reveal to us that the code to disarm the bomb is 1505. Now we can simply waltz into the room, input the code, and... Automated dispersal device deactivated. Countdown terminated. Have a nice day. But if you can't be fucked doing either of those things, you can just shoot the thing and that'll disarm it. Automated dispersal device armed. Automated dispersal device deactivated. Although this method is far less subtle. Which actually brings me to my next point. We can get to the hostages, disarm the bomb, and move on completely undetected without having to assault anyone. Here's how. Upon entering the lab and reaching the bottom of the stairs, rather than moving forward, we'll actually wait until no one's looking or around and make our way behind the staircase on the right, move the crate to reveal a vent and travel through it. We will then climb the ladder that we come across and head through the next opening. Soon, we'll be crawling along a beam well above the lab before re-entering another vent and re-emerging in the office, having completely evaded the guards below. We've also prevented the bomb from automatically arming as we didn't come in through the doors. And now we have as long as we need to hack and disarm the bomb. Access granted. And voila! Hostage has been rescued. Not that they fucking appreciate it. Check this out. I know you don't want us running around the place until everything is secured, so why don't you go ahead and do that so we can get out of here? Why, you ungrateful... Well, you know what they say, time flies when you're unconscious! Uh. Bitch. Anybody else got a problem? Huh? Anyone? What about you, toss bag? What took you so long? Where are the cops for Christ? Shut your face! Anybody else have anything to say about the way I saved your lives today? I didn't think so. So now we'll head back through the vent until we reach our original point of entry in the laboratory. Here we'll hide beneath the stairs, wait for the nearby guard to walk away, and sneak through the nearby door. Now this next part is fairly straightforward. We'll simply move down this corridor using the large blocks to hide ourselves from sight. We'll then wait for this patrolling enemy to walk past, and then move around the corner, and then follow the corridor before taking a prompt left turn, being sure to evade the nearby surveillance camera. Which I nearly failed to do. We'll then hack yet another keypad, move through the door, enter the chamber, wait for the game to load, and move into the next room. Which happens to be yet another room crawling with hostiles, and we just so happen to need to get to the elevator on the other side. But we need not fear. Yeah because there's a vent right here. All we need to do is move these boxes and we can head on through. Hey Larry, can you hear someone moving boxes around back there? Why yes, I can Thomas, but I think it's best if we just ignore it. Yes, yes, I tend to agree. And now we'll weave our way through this air vent before exiting the other side and immediately taking cover to avoid this guard's line of sight. Ah, what a lovely breeze coming from this recently opened vent. Of course, when he turns around, we're gonna fuck him up. I've got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. I've got a love that I know that it's all mine. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Whoa. Once the guard has been taken care of, we can actually head into this room and pick up a frag grenade and some other ammunition. But that's entirely up to you. 
Heading up this corridor now, we'll sneak through this door, use the nearby objects to hide ourselves, and when the coast is clear, move to the elevator. But ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed, let me just point out that there is a small room to our left that if we care to check out, contains another isolated wanker sorting through a box. Oh man, I lost my glasses. They have to be in here somewhere and I just gotta find them. I can't see shit without my glasses. Oh, what's this? Maybe I found something. Huh? Sup? Ah! Okay, so maybe shooting him in his face isn't the best option, so instead we'll pay him the courtesy of a non-lethal takedown. Oh no, please, not my masturbation! Oh, you monster! Shut up! And now we'll grab the damage upgrade contained in this box and proceed to the aforementioned elevator. After exiting the elevator, we can pick up this Praxis kit, which we can use to upgrade our very own Adam Jensen. Upon continuing forward, we find ourselves confronted with a corridor being occupied by a surveillance camera and an active sentry gun. So rather than take the head-on approach, we'll backtrack slightly, move this box, and head through this vent. Looking at the radar, we can see that the vent has allowed us to travel right past the camera and sentry gun, and we re-emerge behind them on the other side of the corridor. We'll then grab these stun gun darts, head through this door, and then enter the next room. G'day, Chief. Step away from the console. Now! Go on. Try it! Help me! Richard, you still there? Where else would I be? Patch me to Seraph, now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we've retrieved the Typhoon weapon. And... We've done it the ghostly way. But there have been some questions raised as to why a purist would be using augmentation, seeing as though it completely contradicts their beliefs. Don't touch him. We'll need an expert to recover his neural hub, in case it's booby-trapped. Now, I know Sarad said not to touch the body, but I want to loot the bastard. And look at that! It was well worth it! And now, guys, our final objective is to confront Zeke Sanders. So, let's get to it! We'll start by exiting the room through the rear door, heading through the next one, and then heading down the corridor to the elevator. Upon reaching the next floor, we'll make our way across this walkway and up these stairs. When we reach the top, we'll come across two guards patrolling. Now, sneaking by them is certainly an option, but it's easier if they're out of the picture. So we'll knock this first guard out and then make our way back to the corridor and discreetly tail the second. Knock knock. Who's there? My fist! Now we'll turn around, head through the nearby door to the right and use the vent to reach the lower level. Re-emerging in the bathroom, we'll head through this door and hide behind these nearby objects. When the coast is clear, we'll begin to sneak our way around the office and make our way to the staircase on the left. Peekaboo! Just kidding, ladies and gentlemen. We'll actually wait for that particular guard to remove himself from that position and then we'll turn around and head up the stairs, all the way to the top. We'll then head through this final door to say hello to Zeke Boy. Don't lie to me. I don't want to hurt you. You're a civilian. But I will if you don't give me a choice. If you didn't want to hurt anyone, you should have stayed home tonight. Oh, look! Seraph's attack dog! You're here to clean up before the police bust in? Yes! No, 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 that's not how it goes down. He thinks we're breaking the law. Shut up! All you body polluters break the laws. You're all the same. You're gonna have a hard time convincing people you're any different once they hear you had an AUG on your team. What? I found your attack dog in the factoring labs, trying to cut through security with his implanted hackware. Nice try, Tolo. But I would never let one of you freaks on my crew. Ah! Back off, Hunter. I've got business to take care of, understand? If what you say is true, and I'm not saying it is, I gotta, I gotta check things out. So me and la vieja, we're leaving. Now a quick way to end this madness is to save yourself the conversation and blow Zeke's fucking head off. See? Problem solved. 
However, it really is in our best interest to actually converse with Zeke, empathize with the situation, and convince him to escape without taking the final hostage. Uh, so obvious. Can't believe I didn't see it till now. He thinks he can just lead me to my death? Think again, cabrón. Get out of here. I did what you wanted. So let me go. No. Okay, okay, I've really got to stop doing that. I got Blade here too, I see. I've got as much interest in finding out who's really behind this as you do, cabrón. Yeah, well, maybe I'll owe you one. But I promise you this, someone's gonna pay. There he is, get him! Ah! Just kidding, folks. Zeke actually does escape, and we actually get more experience points for choosing this route. And of course, we're a fucking ghost. So now all we're gonna do is head outside, tell Greg Thorpe that we saved his wife, get to the helipad, talk to Malik, and get the fuck out of here. Get me out of here, Malik. Your wish is my command. Climb in. And that concludes the second episode of Let's Play Deus Ex Human Revolution. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Maybe add this to your favourites. It helps out immensely. And I'll see you guys next time.